Hello, my non-existent faithful viewers. I have my laptop back now, and you probably didn't know it was gone because you don't stalk me. I'm going to be reviewing Train Spotting today. A Scottish book, you can't. Now I'll start off by saying I haven't seen the film, so I didn't really imagine you and McGregor in any of the roles. I know he plays Mark Renton, the main character. One of the first things that will hit you upon starting this book is it's written in a Scottish dialect. There's a lot of boots instead of about, for example, as just one of the words phrased like a Scottish person would say it. Um, and that may come across as difficult. Some words are completely different, not just written in a different dialect, there's sort of Scottish slang mixed in. Um, it's sort of akin to reading A Clockwork Orange the first time, I would say. Although you get the hang of it a lot more quickly because obviously they're real words, just written in a different way, most of them anyway. It's not all in Scottish dialect because Irving Welsh does tend to shift into third person quite a lot. And although this does make it a lot easier to read, I feel like these are some of the weakest sections because Irving Walsh is a great writer when he's writing in the Scottish dialect because he can really get across the raw energy of those youths. But when he's writing in normal prose, he's just a bit dull. It's sort of like very bare bones, throwery type writing. And even though I suppose there's nothing wrong with that objectively, I personally am a fan of more pretentious sort of poetic, poetic prose. It's not just the prose that's varied though, because it's more of a collection of short stories that are linked than an actual novel. There are some sort of references throughout the book to other things that have happened, but it doesn't continue. There's no chapter which continues on from another one. Um, and evidently they were originally short stories because at the back, it tells you quite a lot of them were included in magazines before Train Spotting came out. So just think about it as short stories in chronological order, many of which feature the same characters. Although not always, there's a few short stories featuring characters who sort of pop up once for their limelight, their 15 minutes of fame, if you will, and then vanish into the background for the rest of the novel. They might get name dropped a few times just to prove they exist outside of their own bubble but we don't get that much. For example, there's one near the beginning about Nina, the teenage cousin of Mark Renton, who doesn't really pop up at all in the rest of the novel, apart from one short two-page scene. So her story doesn't have any significance story-wise, really, because obviously we, she appears for two pages. We wouldn't really need to know her entire life story. But I suppose, in a way, it does thematically have a lot of significance. She sort of represents the beginning of the dangerous path when teenagers start becoming rebellious. Most grow out of it, but then ones who are really rebellious. I mean, she's sort of, oh, I don't care, my uncle's dead, that kind of rebellious. Death doesn't matter. I'm so rebellious. That you can eventually become people like Mark Renton, who hate life. You've probably heard the famous choose life speech from the film, which is also in the book. Um, and I think that proves how on a downward slope if people go that far into their rebellious teenage years they can get to a point of no return. While there's a certain sense of irritating discontinuity to the short story way of writing I suppose overall it's a good thing because it just means there's a lot more variety in the story. You never really get bored of a continuous prose style or theme or character that you know after a while certain books can sort of crush you under the weight of their own feeling even if they're amazing books to start off with. Another problem with this way of writing is that it's very inconsistent. There are quite a lot of chapters I would just completely scrap all together. Um, there are a lot of chapters which are eh, meh um, and there are some absolute fucking masterpieces in there, which would be definite five stars if they were released as short stories rather than in a novel. So it's sort of like you want to grip the good ones and draw them out from the detritus. I mean, that's true of anything, but more so when a novel's written in this disjointed form. 
Now let's talk about the characters of the novel. The main character is obviously Mark Renton, played by Ewan McGregor in the film I still haven't seen. Um, and he's sort of a typical main character in a way. He's shy more than more so than a lot of his friends. He likes to read, even though he doesn't talk about it much. He's quite relatable both to the one side of the society that likes socialising and the other side that likes staying indoors and reading and not talking to people. He's got both sides there, I think. He's a fairly universal protagonist. But then there are other things about him which aren't universal, like obviously the drug addiction is the main one. But he's also quite a radical left-winger. He hates rich people, he's a bit of a socialist nutter, that kind of thing. Although, in a way, that's quite a typical young person main character in a book about the working class. So, no surprises there. Despite these cliché elements, I think he's quite a well-characterised person, especially as you get the most chapters with him and his Scottish dialect really helps bring him to life because he's got very subtly different Scottish dialect from other characters. I mean, it's all subtly different, but Marx is quite recognisable in the way he he is quite a forceful Scot. He doesn't mince his words and try and pretend to be English, even though by his own profession he doesn't hate the English. Um, his is probably the least accessible, but it's the most enjoyable once you get into. It's not just the fact that his dialect is so well written, though. He, he's got the most love, I suppose, for the rest of the characters, but the most hatred as well. And that just adds to his universal appeal. Then there's Mark's two friends, Sick Boy and Spud. Sick Boy's a bit of a Sam Malone-type charmer character. He's had his brushes with heroin addiction, but he's a lot cleaner than Mark. He's a lot more respectable, if you will. Um, and... He is a world-class seducer, known throughout Leith, which is their area of Edinburgh. Um, although I say he's more of a Sam Malone type character, he's also a bit of a yuppie. He's quite... He's quite obsessed with money. And he has conversations with Sean Connery in his head, which is actually really entertaining. Other than being a morally... A, abhorrent human being. He's quite a nice guy. He's nice to his friends. He defends Leith from this awful person who we don't actually know what they did um, by shooting his dog or making his dog try and bite that person, uh, putting him in the hospital. Um, which sounds horrible, but apparently the guy had done terrible things and he deserved it, although we'll never know. Um, he's not completely horrible compared to some characters in the book. I'll get to them in a moment. But I think overall he's quite a well-written character. And then we've got Spud, who's sort of the most innocent character. I'd say Mark Renton is the protagonist, but Spud is probably the most sympathetic, if not the most relatable. He's, he wouldn't hurt a fly, he's incredibly innocent, and he sort of gets drawn into the drug world by accident because he's so gullible and he can be easily led by those with stronger personalities. Um, He's the most likeable character out of the four, definitely. Although he isn't characterised particularly deeply, I must say. And then there's Begbie, who is probably quite notorious for a number of reasons, namely his very thick Scottish accent in the number of scenes in the film and the glass throwing. And the fact that the novel takes its title from him kicking the shit out of someone because he's just met his dad, um, who said, Are you doing a bit of train spotting, son? And he's very irritating, so he beats someone randomly to death. Well, actually not to death, just to injury, presumably. Um, but I have to say, I think Begbie's probably the worst written character by a good stretch. All of the other three sort of occupy cliches, but then they have nuances which bring them out and make them more specific to their time and place. Mostly heroin, actually, and being Scottish. But you know, definitely feel like they're characters rather than archetypes. Begbie maybe suffers from the fact that other than one chapter he's only really described by his friends. Um, he only has one point of view chapter and he doesn't get much to say for himself. But he just sort of seems like a cliche psycho. There's nothing to peg him out from the crowd. 
there's so many psychos in fiction these days that I suppose I'm speaking from hindsight and this book was written over 20 years ago but he doesn't seem like a character more like the psycho archetype the sort of brutish man who blackmails people into being friends with him could go off like a gun at any moment and is generally an awful human being with no redeeming qualities and it's easy to bring this type of character in to make people like sick boy with no emotional attachment to other humans seem better but it's quite a lazy writing technique really and I think Irving Welsh is better than that as most of the rest of the novel shows. I'm going to give this book a B grade. It was a mostly positive read and the format did mean that there were some great moments throughout but it also let the book down in a way because it meant it was very inconsistent and there were quite a lot of chapters which probably were completely unnecessary. Um, and then there was the characterization which all of four of the characters are basic archetypes but three of them are given humanity. Obviously there are other characters but those are the four on the book cover that I've got so I'm going to think of those as the four main ones. Um, but Begbie was quite cliche. He was an archetype of a psycho basically and we didn't get enough of what drives him, what his inner thoughts are, apart from that one scene I mentioned before with his father, which was one of the best scenes in the book involving Begbie, because that gave a hint of what drives him, although daddy issues is quite a cliche reason, I suppose. So in a way, that just makes it worse.